When President Trump was mocked by Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau this week at the NATO meeting, of course, our press ate it up. See, we're not respected in the world. They were essentially laughing at the U.S. president there. That's remarkable. Imagine getting laughed off an entire continent. This is how they talk about our president. When people are laughing at you, that means you're the joke. He's the brunt of a joke right there. Which is going to be haunting this president right to at least Saturday Night Live this week. Yes. yes. Wrong, 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 wrong. Wrong, 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 wrong. <laughs> I wonder if Justin is still laughing. We're covering this breaking news of the Canadian economy shedding more than 70,000 jobs in the month of November. This is the largest jump in the unemployment rate, by the way, uh, when you look at sort of monthly performance since 2009. Oh, it's not doing so well there in Canada. We want you to do better, but mm -mm. And remember, French President Emmanuel Macron was also there giggling alongside Trudeau. But perhaps he should have been taking care of business at home. The, the economic situation in France is, is unsustainable. You have unemployment at nearly 9%, huge unfunded pension liabilities. This is absolutely unsustainable. Of course, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson, he hosted the NATO soiree and was also having a good time. Too bad the same cannot be said for his own middle class. The UK economy is in the worst shape since 2010, and things aren't any better in Italy. Here's yesterday's headline. Italy's economic growth set to remain weak in near term. Oh, but Germany's doing better, right? Well, here's what things look like there. German orders resume slide, defying hope for a factory rebound. So maybe that's why Angela Merkel always looks like she's sat on a pine cone, especially when she's next to Trump. As for Japan, well, things aren't any better there. Japan's economic troubles offer a glimpse of a sobering future. I'm showing you all of this because every day American workers should think the, thank the good Lord that we have a president who actually gets it. We have a tight labor market. That means wages are going up. We have more deregulation that frees up businesses to grow and hire, gives them a lot of incentives. We have lower taxes. That means you keep more of your own money to spend it as you see fit. The Democrats, they, they just don't trust your judgment. They want more control over almost every major decision you make. They're also, of course, trying to impeach a president on nothing, uh, a nothing phone call, hearsay, conjecture, during one of our greatest economies in the past half century. 266,000 jobs in November. This blows away expectations. We don't take any glee in this at all. It's heartbreaking. But the president gave us no choice. This is the best number I've ever seen in my life. You can't contradict that these are the best numbers of our lives. I speak for my colleagues when I say that, I do, that we do not take this lightly. A uh, report everyone should be thrilled with. The great jobs number has uh, let this market go from shrugs to hugs. We do not intend to delay when the integrity of the next election is still at risk. This is a good number for a re-election. Well, you see the, the, the dis dissonance here? Amazing economic news and glum, morose, horrified Democrats. They want to impeach this economy. I'm glad the White House dismissed Democrats' 5 p.m. deadline for cooperating on impeachment today. Why do I find it hard to take, I don't know, Pelosi, Nadler, Schiff seriously? Because they're fundamentally unserious people. Bloomberg gave it all up yesterday in an interview. They know they can't win with Biden and the gang. That's why he jumped in. Their entire 2020 campaign strategy consists of one word, impeachment. They're just not serious about working on important issues that could actually improve your life. Not USMCA, not prescription drugs, not infrastructure, despite Pelosi's claims to the contrary. We have 275 bills, and as I said to you, legislate, investigate, litigate. She should have added regurgitate, okay? It's the same thing over and over again. It's a farce. In 2018, moderate Democrats campaigned on this idea that they would work with the president on key issues. But they've only worked to oust him. They should all be tossed out. 
None of the 2020 Democrats argue that they can do a better job on the economy. They can't. They don't even really try anymore. When they're not pushing a totally baseless impeachment, they're catering to groups like Planned Parenthood, the NEA, CARE, and, of course, the EU. And the EU, by the way, loves them because the EU can play them. This has been a phenomenal week for the president and for the country. He was derided by the elites on the international stage and by academics on the domestic stage. And he ended it with a socko economic report that is the envy of the world. The Democrats aren't mad because President Trump's policies aren't working. They're seething because they are. And how sad for them and their carnival act of a party. But for the rest of us, we're going to keep working hard and playing hard. We're going to be counting our blessings and staying focused on what really matters, especially this time of year, faith, family, and our country. And that's the angle.